Hey, I laid out the Axios report on what's going on that, that Nancy Pelosi has told Biden he needs to step down. Because, and this is all because it, part, part of it is the polling. But the, the much bigger part of it is that increasingly Joe Biden is coming across as feeble, for lack of a better word. Um, and, you know, he doesn't, he, he, we don't want him to go out that way. I mean, you know, we want him to be remembered as this guy who just accomplished incredible things. And, and I think he wants to be remembered that way too. But uh, I mentioned this very briefly yesterday. I, I had, uh, Louise and I had several conversations about, you know, do we want to get into this? And, um, but, but now it's kind of front and center. Steve Schmidt uh, blogging about it this morning over at Substack. And this was this, this Zoom call that happened uh, a few hours before the Butler, Pennsylvania uh, rally, before the assassination attempt on Biden, or on Trump, excuse me. Uh, it was a Zoom call with Biden. And uh, it was so-called moderate Democrats on Capitol Hill. He had had a previous uh, calls with the Congressional Black Caucus and the Congressional Progressive Caucus, both of which gave him their support. This is the so-called moderate Democrats. And one of the participants told Steve Schmidt, he said, quote, the call was even worse than the debate. He was rambling. He would start an answer, then lose his train of thought, and then he'd say, whatever. He really couldn't complete an answer. I lost a ton of respect for him. Another one of the Democratic members of Congress who was on the call told Steve Schmidt, quote, the president was rambling, dismissive of concerns, unable or unprepared to present a campaign strategy, and had a particularly troubling exchange with Jason Crow saying to him, uh, tell me something you've never done with your bronze star like my son. Uh, which is kind of weird. I mean, you know, Joe Biden's son was a great guy, Bo Biden, you know, he went to Iraq, but he was a JAG officer. He was a lawyer, basically. Um, Jason Crow was a combat officer who was in combat, who was wounded in combat, who was awarded, I, I believe, the, the Silver Star, certainly Purple Hearts. And, uh, you know, you don't trash people like that. That, that uh, I think, kind of hurt Biden in that exchange. Uh, but but Crow was respectful. Uh, you know, Biden lost his cool and said, you know, tell me somebody who hasn't, you know, had better foreign policy than me. And uh, Congressman Crow said, it's just not breaking through, Mr. President, to our voters. And Biden's response was, well, you ought to talk about it. On national security, nobody has been a better president than I've been. Name me one. Name me one. So I don't want to hear that crap. So this was a fairly combative conversation. Keep in mind, this was, you know, last Saturday. Today is Thursday. But then yesterday, Adam Schiff came out and said, you know, he loves Biden. He's been a consequential president. He's done wonderful things. But he says, quote, I have serious concerns about whether the president can defeat Donald Trump in November, end quote. And then Steve Schmidt notes the Biden campaign has functionally collapsed. Now, that's been aided by the fact that Biden now has COVID, or at least is reported to have COVID. And Steve Schmidt says, basically, the people who have made this happen are Jill Biden and Hunter Biden and a handful of out-of-touch White House aides. Uh, he says, the arrogance is astounding. And he says, I'm heartbroken over the humiliation of Joe Biden and the presidency that I'm witnessing. Each interview is further proof of the president's decline. The plain truth is he's barely intelligible when he speaks. And that's the problem. I mean, I love Joe Biden. I have so much respect for this man. I've met Joe Biden. I, you know, I, uh, Louise has met Joe Biden. We've spent time with him. We've spoken with him. He's a wonderful man. Now, this was when he was vice president to Obama, and he was just full of pep and running around the room and grabbing people and hugging people and talking to people. And, 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 and he's still doing a lot of that. It's just that he kind of shuffles and his voice is kind of weak, and, and you know, it's, it's hurting him. And the stakes are really high. So again, I am, not, I am not echoing my earlier call for Joe Biden to step down. I, I, it's not my role to do that, frankly. I think that, that has to be the people around him, the people that he knows and he trusts. And I don't want to be, in fact, I'm very reluctant to even be having this conversation because I don't want to be part of the, you know, we really, part of the unproductive conversation class, as it were when we really should be talking about how J.D. Vance 
is a tool of right-wing libertarian billionaires who don't believe in America, who think women shouldn't vote, who think democracy is an impediment to, quote, freedom, who want to run this country without, you know, unions, without the rest of us having any say in it. That's who J.D. Vance is. And Donald Trump is a corrupt con man billionaire who's been convicted of raping a woman by two juries of his peers, who's been convicted of 34 felonies, including tax fraud, insurance fraud, and business fraud, who, who had to pay $25 million to make whole the, the young people that he ripped off at his fake university, whose party went all the way to the Supreme Court to block Joe Biden from stopping student debt, from softening the, the, the damage of student debt, forgiving student debt. That, that Donald Trump, you know, cheated on every single one of his wives and, and yet has the support of the Christians or the people who, these, these, you know, people who pretend to be Christians. John Pavlovitz had a great piece this morning about how I, I used to think I was a Christian because I thought, you know, I, I lived the, the life that Jesus told me to. But there's all these people out here saying, no, no, to be a Christian, you have to hate immigrants. You have to want to take away health care. You have to want to do away with food stamps and stop feeding, you know, hungry people. So, anyway, I'll, I, I will leave it at that.